Really excited, Krista, to have you out. Um, Jenna, I think that she's a, a newer conversation in the community, so maybe you can just kind of start by introducing her and sharing a little background. Absolutely, it's my pleasure. So Krista is an internationally recognized expert on personal branding, publishing, and business innovation. She was named in the top 40, under 40 of outstanding young business professionals and is the author of the award-winning book, Get Noticed, Be Remembered, Creating a Personal Brand Strategy for Success, which is actually, Anton, I don't know if you know this, was, is used at Purdue University for their grads and undergrads as a textbook in the courses of personal branding. So how cool is that? Love it. Uh, Chris is also the founder and CEO of KCS Family of Companies. And in just a short amount of time, I've talked with Krista, really been an inspiration to me, not only as a wildly successful business leader, but a woman. And I just really think that our attendees are going to be motivated by the way that you look at personal branding as an alternative to a business model and how you can incorporate that and the innovative strategies that you have. So I'm super excited about the conversation today and also our conversation in November. So if you can just dive a little bit deeper into what our attendees can expect to hear from you, that would be great. Amazing. Well, I'm honored and it really is my privilege to be here today with you to get my first intro to the community and uh, also looking ahead to a couple of weeks in November at the conference. So one of the things I'm super wildly passionate about is I've been talking about personal branding for a very, very long time since, in fact, social media before social media was even invented, like MySpace was invented, but it was only for bands and very outlier communities. Uh, but now it's an idea whose time has finally come. And what I love about working with communities, especially like yours, is that you have these incredible members who have established expertise in a topic that we can really build a personal brand platform around because that's the key thing with personal branding is so often it's a term where people think of it as like a vanity play and it's anything but that you know the the logo and the website, those are just simply the clothes that your brand wears. But as with humans, what's so important is that the person and the values and who you are and what you stand for and the, the way that you can create contribution to your clients, that is really what creates a brand of substance. And it's so exciting that your community is just filled with members who have that level of substance. So, Love it. I, I love that analogy, like the logo and sure. the colors or spectrum might be like the clothes you wear, but it's really right. the person that actually makes the difference once, you know, once you open your mouth or you have a relationship. So just to kind of start from the beginning, I'm an advisor, I'm an accountant, uh, you know, I'm, I'm hearing this conversation and I'm thinking personal branding, like, isn't that for like a CEO of a fortune 100 company? Like, how does that, how does that relate to me? Can well, you like, play with that a little bit. Exactly. And so even if you think of people do think it's for CEOs and people, but you know, the CEO of Fast Company Mag or of Harley Davidson was quoted in Fast Company magazine as saying, here at Harley Davidson, yes, we do sell motorcycles. But more importantly, what we sell is the ability for a 52-year-old accountant to dress in black leather, ride through small towns, and have people be deathly afraid of him. And that to me is the tie between accountants and brands, right? Is that you can be whoever you are. And I think that in this day and age, the world, especially the world of business, the future of work is going to look very, very different on the post-coronavirus world side. And it is time for the real you to come out and shine. And when you can combine that with the trust level that you already have being a phenomenal, relevant advisor to your clients and be able to have your expertise shine through the lens of the package of the real you, that is what people want. You know, the stereotypical accountant, CPA, that is definitely a thing of the past. And I love that that's the time and place and world that we're living in now where you can have your cake and eat it too. You can bring all of who you are and your extraordinary talent to the game. So we're talking about 
getting rid of or letting go of the stereotypes of what a financial advisor or an accountant looks like or should speak like. And we're talking about what does Anton Anderson look like or speak like in a genuine forum who happens to be a financial advisor slash accountant, et cetera. Is, is that kind of the, the thought process here? Is it's more of a genuine conversation about the real passions behind the profession or behind yes. the individual? Yes. And even in my own world, you know, like I was going through a unique ability experiment where I was looking at like all the things I do within my business and my life. And I was like, oh, well, sales, I would put a U or an E beside that. I'm either uniquely gifted or I'm excellent at that. But when I actually slowed down sales, what I realized is the sales, the part of sales that I'm really great at is that I have a phenomenal founder story. So if I'm selling publishing to a client, the reason they want to work with me is that when I was an author and had my manuscript in hand and went out looking for a publisher, I could either self-publish or get picked up by a big house. There was nothing in the middle. And I wanted that. So I designed and built a publishing company that was exactly what I wanted as a consumer. In the case of personal branding, everything that I've built from the framework and the models, I was a figure skater for 19 years competitively. And my identity as a figure skater was wrapped up in who I was. And when I had a career ending injury that in one second flat as my hip flexor tore, it ended my career. I didn't know who I was anymore. And I started to see the distinction and created a model for personal branding where through all the seasons of evolution of your life. So if you started, you had a career before you were an advisor, before you were a CPA, that actually factors into your story and what creates credibility with your clients. If you learn how to tell the story in a way that's impactful and make it relevant to what you do today. And so doing that fine tuning of the storytelling and then combining that in a powerful visual personal brand that reflects it, that's where kind of all of these things come together. That's exciting. I, I so love cool. that. Yeah. It, I, I love the movement towards genuine, you know, transparent, like I think you see the rise of things like podcasts or YouTube channels or of course social media. Um, is kind of all centered around that. Like, let's, let's actually have a more genuine conversation, which is such a neat thing that you're kind of bringing to the profession. Even with Krista, the first time we met, you asked me what my unique genius was. And I probably gave you an answer, but I really sat back and thought about that. You know, what is my unique genius? What is an advisor's unique genius or an accountant's? And, you know, really tapping into that. Well, and think of if you were a female financial advisor and you yourself had gone through a divorce, how powerful is that story combined yeah. with your expertise in, in financial wellness? Like it's almost the combination of your unique genius of what you came in with that was an inborn natural talent mm -hmm. combined with the skills and the experience you've learned along the way combined in a three circle Venn diagram overlapping with your life story and the adversity that you've overcome in the center of those three things. If you can find crossover, that is where your true purpose resides. So as an advisor, as a CPA, like it isn't enough to just look at the skills and talents and expertise you have with your credentials. What we want to know as consumers, because con connecting with you is connecting with a real human being. We want to know what are the inborn talents. Maybe you have a talent for leadership. Maybe you've got a talent for pattern recognition that then when you look at a series of financial statements, it literally jumps off the page to you. Well, those things combined with your own desire to create wealth through real estate as a hobby. Think of that when you tie all that together as a CPA or an advisor. I mean, those real life pieces help to sell what you're doing in a way that's effortless. You're, there's no selling involved. You're just showing up and being who you are. So I'm sitting here listening to this and I'm thinking, okay, like it's, it's making sense. Like I, I, I'm, 
I, I follow the discussion, but I have no idea where I would start in that. You know, I've always been kind of told, get this license or take this exam or focus on this type of client or do this type of marketing. This is a whole spin on that conversation. So when we're together, is that part of what you're going to kind of share with us is some ideas on where to begin in this process? Yes, that's or what if I was going to say. You want to know that where to begin? Well, show up in November because that's the conversation that we're having. And I didn't plant that question, but I was hoping <laughs> that was going to be the answer. <laughs> so there are, there, are, there are kind of practical steps in terms of what you can help with and get the ball rolling regardless of where somebody's at in, in the career, whether they're just getting started, whether they're doing pretty well, whether they feel like they're rocking and rolling, but they know they have more to potentially build or give. Like it feels like the personal branding conversation kind of applies across the board. Yes. And it is a five-step process. So the very first stage in any personal brand endeavor would be defining your personal brand. Then you position it, you package it, you champion it, and you launch it. And those five phases take into account people who already have a very solid feel on who they are and what they stand for might need to spend less time in the defining phase, but in the positioning phase, as far as where they're going to sit in the marketplace related to that life experience and their skills and expertise and innate abilities, they might want to spend a little more time in phase two. Packaging, that's the visual part that we were talking about before, the colors, the fonts, and the symbolic representation of who you are as a brand. Championing, that's who you're surrounding yourself with and what you've created with the mastermind and your entire infrastructure, your network and the way that you are championing people out into the marketplace, that by them being a part of your organization, that is creating brand credibility for them too. So championing has to do uh, not just with the positioning piece from phase two, but also it's its own full step and really taking a look at a 360 degree view around you. And then the launch phase isn't just like putting it out and saying, look at me, look at me, because you have to know exactly where to put it and where to launch it. Because, you know, if your target audience are, you know, seniors who are not tech savvy, then how much of a web presence, unless it's the kids who are the ones who are the actual buyers and the mom and dad just show up to the appointment. So really knowing that customer and knowing what avenues and channels to launch in is all part of the process as well. So can you repeat those five just for our listeners, Krista? For sure. So defining is phase one, positioning, packaging, championing, and launch. Love it. Very cool. So what about scenarios where people have business partners? Are, are, are people thinking, oh, you're going to do this for my business partner and I, or are we really getting away from that? And really the first is the personal branding and the second is the company or business partners or anything like that. So each person, that's the beautiful thing when you think about the power of personal branding is that if we were to read like a LinkedIn article, for example, at the very end where it has the byline in an article or in a magazine, and it'll say, you know, Anton Anderson is the founder of, and it'll give you dual cred, right? So it'll give you personal brand credit, and it'll also give you business credit. And so my framework and model, which I'll be teaching you guys in November, that works hand in hand so that you aren't just building your personal brand, but it actually creates an increased valuation in your company as well, Got which it. for Love everyone it. who's in a partnership, increased valuation in a company is increased valuation. Right. Uh, but what's nice about that is it also creates just a little separation between you and the company, which also then allows you to lend your credibility back to the company so that if you were uh, in a situation where you wanted to sell your book of business and move to a different career, or maybe you love being a thought leader and you want to put other coaches that are advisors in who could actually service the day-to-day -day operations, 
that's going to start to give you that gain that you're looking for and the enhanced credibility in order to be able to be able to do that. So it really is a win-win scenario that protects you in all facets. It future proofs your career in a way that nothing else can, which is why I've been so passionate about it for so long. And it's just super exciting that we're now getting to a place we're where here. I love when it. I'm talking about it, you're nodding your heads instead of the what is she what? talking about? <laughs> right. Yeah. So long. So it's awesome. Yeah, I love it. Very exciting. Good. Well, I, I know we promised 15 minutes or so, which I think we're at. Um, it's, it's really, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, Jenna, any thoughts or kind of wrap up comments from you? Yeah, I mean, I'm so, you'll see me taking notes in November because I love everything that uh, Chris speaks about. And I think we all can learn from it. It's obviously things that Ant and I are passionate about. But if you're looking to invest in yourself, in your business, you know, be there taking notes with me in November. You can join in person or virtually. Just go to elitegrowthacademy.com. There's still time to register. Our room block is still open. We just extended it. If you want to come out and stay, uh, we'll be there. We're really looking forward to it. Another great uh, speaker presentation conversation today. Thank you so much. Yeah, we look forward to seeing you in person, Krista. Yeah, thanks so much, Krista. I appreciate it. All of you. <laughs> Thanks everybody. Hope you're having a wonderful day so and we much. hope to see you in San Diego in a couple weeks. Bye. Talk to you soon. Bye.